All right, well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, my name is Laura Clay and I am the Director of Field Service. So I have the pleasure of working with all of our staff members who service your units directly. Um, what we wanted to provide today was basically an overview of how to get kids into your pack, right? Because the most important thing about uh, building up scouting is offering kids the opportunity to join. We hear from a lot of people that May they don't know there's scouting going on in their community. They don't know how to get involved. And so what we'll be addressing today is all of the resources available to help you out and talking about why it's, it's really important to do this. So um, Philip, did you wanna introduce yourself and get started? Uh, sure, thank you, Laura. So I'm Philip Alpha, VP of membership for the council. Um, what we're trying to do here today is, is to give you some tools and resources so you can recruit more effectively and particularly what we think is the most key recruiting tool you have, which is an, a, to put on a recruiting event or two every year. Uh, spring and fall will be great for, to run those events so that you uh, have an opportunity to invite new people in. And we think a key way to do that is to get your, your guys, all your uh, people involved in bringing people along. So. Again, we're going to try and support you with, with more marketing to get the word on scouting out into the community, which will help you become more of the brand awareness of scouting we think is, has been lagging and we need to uh, we need to improve that and we know that. Uh, but we also need you as a resource to help us uh, bring people along, bring prospects along by uh, getting your getting your current people to invite members to come and join these, these uh, recruiting events. So that's that's very key. And you can see that uh, in some of these statistics we have that 35% of people who join was or is a scout, a lot joined because a, a friend invited them or a family enjoyed it, invited them. That's what we're talking about. They saw a flyer at school. But again, if we can get that connection with those people that want to come to a recruiting event, encourage them to come, that's the, that's the, that's the real best way to get people to join and see what the opportunity is in scouting. So we have a, a range of a range of, uh, of tools and uh, processes here to help you support that operation, both at the district and the council level. So we're always looking for some new creative ways to uh, recruit. So we encourage those from your someone's in the background with a okay. Encourage you to to uh, bring those to bear as well. To talk to your uh, district membership people when you've got some ideas. We're always looking for new ones that can help you grow more effectively. It's one of our key key attributes when we think the volunteers can be a big part of that recruiting process. So with that, I'll hand it over to hand it back to Laura and she can continue with the process. Thank you. Yeah, so we're going to take uh, attendance right now. Um, so you'll see a little poll here. Um, just basically let us know if you're here, you're paying attention. <laughs> and this is how we're just kind of keeping track of who attended. So like Philip said, a lot of people joined because they were, it sounds straightforward, but because they were invited, there was an opportunity for them to come. Um, we do see a lot of people come back because they had a family member in scouting, but that 26% because a family or friend invited them and the 24% because they saw a flyer talk at school, that feeds in really well with what we'll be talking about here today with sign up events and having that opportunity to join. So, all right, we got all eight answered here. Thank you guys. Um, up next, we've got Lauren, who is going to talk about um, informal sign-up opportunities versus formal sign-up opportunities and share a little bit about the success her pack has had. Lauren? Thank you, Laura. Uh, yeah, my name is Lauren Dillis. I'm with PAC 494, and I'm also the Bill Hart District Membership Chair. Um, and I just kind of wanted to go through the different kinds of sign-ups that you can do. Um, you know, scouting is year round. And I think a lot of people kind of forget that, that you don't have to sign up in fall and you don't have to wait and sign up in spring that you can really join at any time. Um, and to utilize those informal opportunities each month within your pack to still recruit, even if you're not having a formal sign up um, opportunity. So like, for example, we have our Pinewood Derby tomorrow. I had an inquiry come through on Tuesday 
um, through BeAScout.com. I reached out to her and she registered by Thursday and I got her a Pinewood Derby car and she's racing on Sunday. So that is obviously not realistic, but, <laughs> but you know, it, it doesn't matter at what point of, of the calendar year, if the, the family is interested in joining, they can join at any point in time and invite them to whatever pack event that you have as an informal um, kind of preview into what it is that they might be signing up for. Now, as far as the formal sign-up goes, that's where you have a specific event where you are just focused on um, meeting and greeting new families and recruiting. And, um, you know, you kind of want to give them a little bit of taste of scouting. I know when we did ours, we had um, we had activities set up in the park for the kids to kind of play around with. We had a, a, a campsite, a faux tent, a campsite that was set up and the kids just got to kind of run around in the tent, which they thought was fantastic. Um, and some games and stuff. And so while the kids were entertained with that, our Cub Master took the parents aside and kind of gave them the spiel about what Cub, you know, Cub Scouts was and what the expectation was. Um, and on their way out, we had a little gift for them and also a way to kind of check in again with them and see, do you want to sign up right now? Do you want to turn in your application now? Um, the one thing we did not have, which I wish we had and we'll probably do moving forward is bringing a laptop. We did not have service at the park that we had it at, but if you have the ability to bring your laptop and actually sign people up right then and there, even better. Um, so one of the, so I made these little packets. I don't know if you can see, sorry. Um, to give to each family. So inside, I had um, our pack welcome packet. So if you don't have a welcome packet specific to your pack, you can use the one that's provided by the council. Um, I had the parent information form so that we're getting, um, you know, in what ways the parents might be able to help and volunteer. The information on the annual health and medical record forms, as well as copies of that for them to fill out and a copy of the application and an adult application in case you're interested in getting the parents um, to sign up, as well as some like, I don't just random handouts that I had had on me, like a family camping checklist and stuff like that. And then on the side, it's probably too small to see, but on the side pocket here, I had listed all of our den leaders and, um, you know, dens and ranks and stuff like that. So they were able to physically take something tangible home with them. Um, in addition to, you know, the information that they receive from our Cub Master. And then, of course, the most important thing is following up afterwards. So make sure that you're checking that sign-in sheet and checking, you know, the information that you're given three, four days later, if you have not heard from them and reaching back out and saying, hey, do you have any questions that I can answer for you? Um, you know, is this something you're still interested in? Um, so that that's that's what worked for our pack. And I know I've got a couple 494 leaders on here as well, then they are more than welcome to <laughs> pipe in if there was anything else from that event that I missed and should have highlighted. Um, but that, yeah, that was it in a nutshell. Oh, I think you're muted. I'm Laura. sure there'll be some questions later about your specific tactics and definitely yeah. that event worked very well for that pack. And again, like Lauren said, having that formal opportunity is great because then you get in a large amount at one time and have that space to talk with families about joining scouting. Um, and to that point, uh, scheduling and planning is super important part of that process. So we do uh, recommend to complete your annual planning process before school is out because we see so many of our Cub Scout families, especially sort of check out for the summer mentally, um, want to take sort of a little bit of a breather with things. Um, and it helps make sure that your current families know when to come back to scouting um, so that they're not rushing right before school starts. That's never a good time of year to be worrying about what's uh, coming up that fall is right before school starts because everybody's got that on their mind. Um, and then having that calendar already in place also lets your pack have something printed like Lauren showed and like we have in this picture from Pack 320 have something to hand to families so that they know when to come back. One of the most common communications we get from families that join scouting is that they don't know when meetings are after that first kind of sign up event or joining opportunity. And actually 44% of families that join then leave Cub Scouts because they felt the meetings were not well organized. And having your plan and having your schedule really goes in with that making sure that everybody's on the same page about 
showing up, what you're doing, and uh, knowing the activities and schedule is very critical. Uh, and as you can see, that parent information packet really helps with that. Um, this packet of one very similar to pack 494. They had a calendar information packet so that there was stuff for families to read about what activities were going on, when they were going on, and who to contact if they had questions. All right, I'll now pass it over to David Forbes, our marketing vice chair for the council to talk about the different resources that we have available. Don't actually know, he might have gotten up. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> okay, I thought I was unmuted, sorry. Um, thank you all for taking the time on a Saturday afternoon to hang out with uh, Philip and Laura and and everybody else who's participating. Um, a lot depends on, on marketing for your membership drive to succeed. For, for me, I'm, I spent my life marketing movies and the, the story was always the same. It's awareness that gets people to respond. So if you're not out in front of the people that you're looking for, um, it's very hard to get them to participate if they can't find you. The growth of your pack and ultimate growth of the scout unit that your own child will be a part of one day depends on the recruiting you do now. So there's an opportunity to take advantage of the resources available. Um, and I think they can help you get to some success, but you can also do any creative ideas or thoughts that you have. Somebody told me a story the other day of um, at Valentine's day this year, um, one of the packs took a little card and attached a piece of candy to the card got permission from the school in the, that, that was serving them um, to give out a, a card with a piece of candy attached for every kid in the eligible age grades. And they actually had some success. It wasn't even the recruiting season typically, but as somebody said, it's always the recruiting season. Um, as soon as you get your, your sign up date set um, with location and a contact person, talk to your uh, staff advisor and they'll coordinate with the schools in your recruiting area. Uh, to, and they can help distribute flyers, the old fashioned flyers, kind of flyers, as well as e-flyers. Go to your school if you can, talk to the kids about scouting. Uh, some schools will give you permission, some may not, but talk to the kids about it. Um, and, and hopefully you'll be able to, to uh, be in touch with parents as well. Um, any other promotions that are allowed at a school, whether it's putting up a sign, distributing a newsletter, posting information on their website, not so easy, but um, those, are the, those are the kind of things that make people aware that you have an event coming up. The council can also provide a school fence banner, assuming your school has a fence um, to hang, and, um, and that can be there for several days. Um, your staff advisor can also get postcards for Be a Scout or a little business sized card for Be a Scout to, helping, to help pass out um, to people coming in and out of school um, or other places that you're around to get them aware and interested. Um, there's also bumper stickers that are available. Um, and uh, you, you can get the council to um, do a posting on its Facebook page. If your district has um, a Facebook page um, or, or other social media pages, they can also uh, post for your particular event. Um, there are lots of ways to get help from the staff. Um, if you have any issues, Laura is always available and is willing to give you whatever support and help you need. As for things you can do individually, um, Probably the most important thing is that you have a great program in your unit, which is pretty much what Laura said just a minute ago. Um, you, when, as, as these events come up, you want to get the scouts and their parents in your unit uh, to get their friends, both the kids and the adults, to attend your sign-up event. Um, and, and all the parents who are in your unit uh, use some kind of social media. If you can get them to 
uh, post on the things that they use, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, um, Nextdoor, uh, or whatever other uh, places they post to let people know that you have an event coming. Um, it's the same with um, neighborhood groups. If you have neighborhood or community websites that are, that are um, sending information out, that's an opportunity as well uh, to be able to do that. There are flyers available that you can get from the scout office. Uh, you can do, hand them out at school pickups, at sporting events, um, or wherever you meet. Um, some newspapers, local newspapers, weeklies usually, will, um, will put something up if they're aware. Um, but the goal is find every place you can um, to get people to know that you have an event coming up and that everyone is welcome. The more awareness, the greater the prospects are for success. Um, and it's repetition that matters. It's always repetition that, that makes you move to the front of people's mind. The more cubs you recruit, the more parents you have to help you. So good luck. Okay, thank you, David, for sharing that. And so at this point, you might be wondering what goes on at the sign-up event itself. So we have Blake here, our staff member with the Crescent Bay District on the west side of LA to walk through kind of a very basic event flow that makes it achievable to sign up kids formally with a small amount of adults. Blake? Yeah, and I think two of the most important themes here through this whole presentation is during pre, during, and post event is follow-up and organization. We talk about the sign-up sheet. How many people came to your event and how many came last year? Having a sign-up sheet will allow you to see that. Um, event sign-up sheets are a line of communication allowing you to keep track of volunteers who want to help. Also gather contact details like a phone number or email addresses and document the number of guests that attended this year and save it to look back on for the following year. Uh, they also help promote safety, keep your records organized and also attendance trends if you happen to have different sign up sheet or different sign up events during the year, you can be better prepared looking back to the sign up sheet. And it allows you to follow up with families who don't end up signing up at the end of the day. It is very important to have an activity for scouts when they are joining. Kids join scouting to have fun. Parents want their kids to join scouting to learn life lessons, build character, and numerous other reasons. And having an activity, parents are trusting us with their most important and precious treasures, their children. And for many parents, this is the first experience that they have with scouting. And if their child has a bad experience, scouting is likely not to get another chance as the choice. So an engaging activity for these potential scouts is key. And this is a great time to use any available den chiefs in units that are connected or close by help have them run the activity while your leadership is speaking with the parents. Talking with families, whoever is going to speak to the family should be prepared to answer a number of questions about the pack, scout safety and so on. A lot of common questions that we do see is how much is this going to cost me? Those leaders that are speaking to the unit or the parents should be prepared with how much are my pack dues, how much are the council fees, how much are national fees, uniform fees, any other fees that are associated with the unit. How do I know my kids are safe? Mentioned youth protection training and also any other training that's required from the BSA, but also now the state of California. How much commitment will I need to make to the pack? How often does your den and packs meet? That I see that a lot in the the events that I've been to. 
a lot of DIN leaders and PAC leaders don't have a definite answer for that. This goes back to the organization. What activities will my child be participating in? Have examples handy. Have Pinewood Derby cars available. Have water rockets or stomp rockets available um, that you plan to be doing in the past or that you've done in the past or plan to be doing in the future. This parent talk should be organized and rehearsed beforehand, not just going into it blindly. Uh, it is okay not to know the answers to these tough questions, but as I said, follow up is 100% necessary because going back to what I said prior, that bad experience for the scouts is the same for the parents as well. And check out if they are ready to join, be ready to accept them. Have a computer tablet available for them to sign up. A lot of phones these days have mobile hotspot that you could use, that you have access to your online application. If you take a paper application home, it'll end up in a pile or filed in the waste management filing receptacle, as I like to call it. And also at your checkout, be sure to have a little bit of your upcoming activities or a packed calendar, which you should have already planned, and phone numbers of the important leaders of the unit. And that is all I have on that. All right. Thank you, Blake. Well, to talk more about the follow-up. Can I add in, can I add in a little bit of suggestion as well? Um, Check out, I think it's really important. I think every parent that's there and brought somebody needs to be talked to before they leave. I think somebody needs to make the ask. I know people are kind of reticent to do that, but I think when you've got them there, make the ask. And even if they don't, don't want to make, if, if they want to say no, then you could always ask them at that point, is there a reason? Can you tell us a reason? Is it too expensive? Is it is it uh, you didn't like the pro? What is it? Try and find the answer. Even a no answer and with a reason is important for us because then we've got a ways to maybe go back to them. Oh, it's a money issue. We have campuships or we have some scholarships. If it's a pro, if it's a timing issue, oh, I can't make that time. Okay, how can we help you with that? So again, I think it's important to make the ask and, and have at least a couple of people at the at the exit so that you've got. Someone's talking to somebody, someone's on the side. If you need to redirect them, you've got someone there to, to maybe, oh, can you talk to, to, the, uh, to the scoutmaster over here or the hex, they can help you. They can help chat to you. I don't know. I think that's an important thing to do as part of the checkout. Uh, David, I don't know how you feel about that, but I'd make that suggestion. Hmm? Yeah, I would completely agree with you. You have them in the room so they've expressed interest. Don't let them go without, without trying to get them to sign up. Hey, if they don't do it on the spot, it's much harder to get them to do it. It is really hard. All right. Well, talking about that follow-up, because we do sometimes have folks who aren't ready to make that decision that night, we have with us Tim Sullivan, the Cub Master of PAC 320, who is consistently able to sign up a lot of families every year, in part because of their great follow-up, both after their sign-up event and year-round with online uh, recruitment. So, Tim, want to take it away, talk about your strategies? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Laura. Um, so like she said, you know, we, we, we do have a sign-up event usually in, every fall, um, and we do get some sign-ups there. We have iPads and things like that where we could do online registration there, but there are usually a significant number of families who, who you know, aren't ready to sign up that night, um, and we've been really successful um, in, in um, closing those and getting them to sign up after the fact, and a few of the things that, um, that we do uh, is we always we always have uh, an event usually within a week or two right after the uh, the sign up night uh, and that's you, our, our big our, our big event is uh, it's an outdoor movie night that we do every every September after our sign up night and it's outdoors we have a barbecue uh, we set up a big inflatable movie screen um, at the lawn and, and, and we show a movie and it's it's a way to get the kids engaged but it also gets the families to come back um, and then we also, you know, it's, we do, we do, we invite them to hikes. Uh, we have a camp out uh, that's right after there. But what we do is, is, is we're inviting them to the activities that they've shown interest in um, and getting them to come back 
and, and usually after one or two act, attending one or two activities um, where it's, it's again, if, if a lot of people don't want to be pushed as that's what we found is, is if you come at them too with the, the used car salesman, like, Hey, you got to sign up tonight. You got to, it kind of, it, it turns them off, pushes them away. So we take a softer approach where we invite them and then we invite them back. And sometimes it takes two or three different activities. They come to a den meeting, they come to an activity, they go on a hike. And then by the, you know, the second or third event, they're like, Hey, we're, we love it. We're ready to sign up. So that's one of the ways that we've done it is, is we collect that list at the sign up night. We put them on our e-blast. So they're, so they're getting all the emails that the rest of our families get. So they're, we're keeping them in communication. Um, you know, we put them in basically in a separate den that we call prospects. And so whether it's an online lead from myscouting.org, or if it's a friend, as someone that says, hey, my friend's interested, we're putting them on this e-blast. And, and every week, every Sunday, an email goes out, it lists all of the activities, you know, what, what the den level activities are, what activity, you know, what, all, all the activities that we do. And so we're really reaching out and br helping bring them in. And then when they're ready, then, you know, we close them. And sometimes that takes two, three, four, five events. Um, but uh, just, sometimes just a sign up alone isn't enough. So you really have to be diligent, uh, collect those sign up lists, be in communication with them, pass their information on to the den leaders, get the den leaders engaged too, make them feel welcome, um, make sure the kids in the den um, you know, are, are, are being engaging to them, reaching out to them. Um, if they can, if they have a friend, you know, it's the, in our, in our, our findings is, is scouting is easier to do with a friend. If, if you have a scout that comes in and they don't know anybody, it's really difficult. Um, you know, it's, that's a hard lead to close, but if they know somebody or if they can bring a friend with them, um, you know, that's, it's a, it's a much easier ask. Um, you know, like the, the, the slide here says 19% of families that, that leave, you know, uh, they, they do so because they're never contacted. So, you know, making that contact after that first night is important. Um, following up on those myscouting.org leads that you get, uh, checking it regularly. I mean, they do a really good job of, of notifying you by email, whoever your key three is that gets those leads. So making those contacts. Um, we've gotten a tremendous amount of scouts off of our myscouting.org leads just because they have been to two or three other units and no one contacted them. They get dumped in our unit within two days. I'm making contact with them and inviting them to our next activity. So, you know, be, be in touch with them. Don't, don't be, don't shy away. Um, and then like Blake said, you know, the, the follow up, you know, really be, you know, gotta be diligent about following up, making the contact, inviting the den meetings and activities and just staying on top of it. It's, it's a bit of work. Um, but I think parents, you know, if they're contacted right away uh, after they submit an inquiry or, or, you know, within a couple of days after that meeting, with, with what you have going on next, they're going to be more likely to come back and, you know, and, uh, and express interest and sign up. Thanks for sharing, Tim. I'm going to do one more attendance yeah. poll here just to make sure we got folks going. Philip, sounds like you got something to add. No, I agree. I thought it was a great presentation. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So as we wrap this up here, I uh, wanted to just talk really quickly about the unit rewards, right? Because we know you guys are working hard out there. And so we wanna make sure that you're being rewarded for the hard work that you do. So other than getting your DoorDash gift card for attending today, um, as a unit, if you have your fall sign up date in um, by June 30th, you will receive a discount code for your pack to have no joining fee during the month of September for any new units. So that's $25 joining fee that none of your new families will pay as long as you get your fall sign up date in by June 30th. And also by June 30th, if you happen to be a pack that does more spring recruiting, if you've grown by 10% or more, we'll give your pack a discount code for 25% off of family camp for everybody in your pack. So two kind of different incentives, depending on whether you trend more towards spring or fall. Um, and for any pack that gets a, us a sign up date, we have a sign up box that you'll be receiving with resources to help with that event flow that Blake talked about. To have that sign in sheet, to have parent information sheets, to get information about what your parents are good at, if they're willing to help, um, 
a parent information guide for them to learn more about scouting because a lot of our new families have no experience with scouting. If you're sitting there talking about packs, dens, lions, bears, ranks, advancement, they don't know what that is. And uh, having that guide there to help walk them through some of that terminology and the Cub Scout experience is really helpful. It also will include a rocket activity kit when you pick up your box. So you can utilize that for your signup event, or if you're doing another fun activity, that's fine too. We just wanna provide you something that will keep the kids occupied with fun while you have that chance to talk with parents about those important questions that Blake mentioned. How much does it cost? What activities will I be doing? Where's the calendar? When's the next meeting? Um, you know, what is scouting all about? Is my kid safe? Those types of things. 